November 1, 2025, Hi, I'm Mike Thompson, and welcome to 121 Point Mike. In this ground school video, I'm covering the last gyroscopic instrument in my instrument mastery series, the heading indicator. The heading indicator looks a lot like a compass, and that's on purpose. It's designed to assist the compass and make it easier for you to determine your direction. But you may wonder why you even need it, since you've already required to have a compass on board. Well, it's a good wondering, because the answer is that pilots found out long ago that it's a lot more useful than a compass, which is sometimes less than ideal. They're subjected to all sorts of errors, and I'm going to get to that in the compass video, which will be pretty soon. These errors make the gyroscopic heading indicator much more useful in pre precision turns. Now, of course, it's prone to errors too, but far fewer than the compass. So let's go over how this thing works. It's got a gyroscope inside that spins around a lateral axis. It's vertical, and it's driven by the vacuum pump from the engine. The gyro gimbal is free to rotate in the vertical axis, though, so that as the plane turns, the gyro stays on its original heading the airplane turns around the heading indicator's gyro, which, of course, wants to remain fixed in space. When the gyro's gimbal rotates with respect to the instrument case, a little set of gears on top uh, converts the rotation to the rotation of the compass card on the face of the heading indicator. There's typically a little airplane symbol in the middle and numbers every 30 degrees with their zeros dropped to make room for them. There are also large markings every 10 degrees and small ones every 5. At the bottom of the instrument is a little adjustment knob so that you can rotate the compass card to align it with your compass. You will align your heading indicator uh, to the compass card during your startup checklist and every so often during flight. The reason for doing this is that the heading indicator will drift uh, for a few reasons. The first is precession, which is caused by friction in the gimbals. The precession from friction reason uh, will show up on your test. The second reason is that the gyro drifts is time. Since the gyro is fixed in space, every hour, you could theoretically expect up to 15 degrees of drift as the Earth rotates underneath you. But now some indi heading indicators receive a magnetic signal from a receiver in the plane, and they're slaved to that signal, and so they don't require adjustment, but I've never used one of those. But important thing about using the heading indicator is that you check it against your compass at regular intervals or after major maneuvers. You need to be flying straight and level though when you adjust it, because if you're not, your compass will be swinging wildly all over itself, and then it won't be much useful as a reference. If the compass is steady in its case though, then you can use it to adjust your heading indicator. You should set your heading indicator before you begin to taxi, and make sure that it reads correctly during all your taxi turns. If not, it might be broken, and you should have it serviced. So now that you know how it works, and how to set it, how do you use it? Well, you use it to detect your heading, obviously. That's the first thing it's good for. If the controller or instructor tells you to turn to a heading, you'll read back the instruction and enter a turn, and you'll turn to that heading. Now, as I mentioned in the previous uh, attitude indicator video, you will start to roll out of your turn at half your bank angle. So if you're banked left at 20 degrees, turning to 270, then you'll start to roll out of the turn when your heading indicator says 280, which is 10 degrees before your target heading, because it's half your bank angle. So that's how you use it during normal operations. If your attitude indicator or turn coordinator has failed, you'll use the heading indicator to sense if you're flying straight or not. If the compass card is turning, you're probably turning too. Verify this, of course, with the compass, but you'll use the heading indicator to see if you're flying straight during your instrument failure training or instrument flight training. When you get to holding procedures, You'll use the heading indicator to help you visualize how to enter a hold, but I'm going to cover, of course, all that in the holding video. So hold on until then. There's really not much to a basic heading indicator. It's a gyroscope driven by the vacuum system that's free to rotate in the vertical plane. It and the attitude indicator are typically vacuum driven, and that'll probably show up on a test. It's prone to drift due to friction and precession, and that'll probably also show up on a test. That's the last of the basic six pack of instruments. We've now covered the pedostatic instruments, which are the airspeed indicator, the altimeter, and the vertical speed indicator. And we've now covered the gyroscopic instruments, which are the attitude indicator, the turn coordinator, and the heading indicator. I'm now gonna have to talk about the compass because there are questions about that and all of its idiosyncrasies on its test. And you're gonna, yeah, that's gonna have to be a new video.
<laughs> so go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already so that you'll be notified when that next video comes out. And stay with me on 121 Point Mike.